This design started with inspiration from RCA and a box in Fusion 360. I used parameters to define the length, width, and height of that box, as well as the fillets, which is just a fancy word for rounded edges, on the sides. This made it really easy to play with the dimensions throughout the design until I was satisfied with the size and shape. One of the most iconic features of the RCA on air sign is the five grooves on either side of the words. The streamlined Art Deco look of this sign almost wouldn't exist without these five subtle indentations, which I scooped out using the sweep tool. One of the coolest parts about Fusion 360 is the timeline. It's a modifiable record of everything you've done in the design, which you can take advantage of in some really interesting ways. In my case, the shell command was including those grooves in the shell thickness, which was totally unnecessary and overcomplicated. To fix this, I simply dragged the shell command back in time before I scooped out those curves with the sweep tool. Fixed it like magic. I wanted to change the text on the RCA sign to something more meaningful than on air, and I spent a few days jotting down words that were powerful for me. Rendering, making, dreaming, creating, and eventually I settled on this one because it just felt right. Making art. That is what I want to be doing. Those iconic Art Deco grooves provided the perfect hiding place for a seam so I could sneakily split the frame into two 3D printable parts. That right there, figuring out how to assemble a multi-part print so it looks good and is functional is one of the most challenging parts of designing 3D printed objects. But it's also fun and rewarding because there are a million right answers and you can come up with unique creative solutions. I have a lot of these half inch nuts and bolts, so I designed the backplate to be screwed onto the sign with this hardware. I made the backplate thick enough so that I could print in a countersink that would make the bolt head flush with the back of the sign. I wanted to mount this sign on the wall, so I added some slots to the backplate that would allow me to hang it from screws. The hanging process would involve marking out the distance between these screws on the wall, so I made sure to make this dimension a nice round number in Fusion. And like the bolts on the back plate, I added a countersink so that the screw heads wouldn't protrude into the inside of the sign. You'll see why this is important later on. The final step in this design was adding cutouts for the switch and power supply. There were two important considerations here. The first was positioning these components so that they wouldn't cast a shadow on the front of the sign. This was solved by picking components that would fit in the sides of the sign. The second was positioning the cutouts so that the components would actually fit inside the sign. This was unexpectedly challenging, because I tend to squeeze things into a small space, but we fit everything in there in the end. After all that design work, we're finally ready to print, and we're going to start with my favorite part of this project the multicolored front plate. This was my first time doing a multicolored print, and it was super easy to set up in Prusa Slicer. All you have to do is select the layer where you want the color change to happen, press the plus button, and Prusa Slicer inserts a line in the G-code so that your printer prompts you to change the filament at this point. I printed the front plate at 100% infill so that the light shining through would be as uniform as possible. If you want to 3D print your very own making art sign, all of the necessary files, including a material list, STL files, 3MF files, and the Fusion 360 model are available on my website, and I'll leave a link for that in the description. Watching those first lines of red get laid down on top of the white was incredibly satisfying. If your printer is capable, I would highly recommend trying out multicolored prints. It looks super clean and opens up so many possibilities for making custom signs. The filament color for the rest of the sign didn't really matter, since I would end up priming and painting these pieces. So I just used some gray PLA that I wanted to use up. 
The backplate was pretty thick to accommodate the screw heads, so I printed it with 15% infill. I designed these nut slots with a really tight tolerance, and to make sure the nuts were fully seated, I used a trick I learned when assembling my printer. After pushing the nut partially into the slot with pliers, I used a screw to pull it the rest of the way in. With the nuts in place, the next step was super gluing the two front pieces of the sign together, and I was really nervous that I would mess this up. But this step went as well as I could have hoped. Flipping the sign onto its back was key, and the seam was perfectly hidden in that top groove. My bed adhesion wasn't quite perfect on these prints, so I got some wavy lines on the surfaces that were touching the build plate. I used dry decks to fill these in, which is normally used to fill small holes in drywall, and it probably wasn't the best choice. I think that after sanding, wiping down, and painting, this stuff had pretty much disintegrated or fallen out altogether. It wasn't a big deal in the end, because these areas weren't very visible in the final product, but there are lots of products commonly suggested for filling in gaps in 3D prints, and I would recommend using one of those. After getting the gray pieces reasonably smooth with some 220 grit sandpaper, I primed them with two coats of Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Primer. The ultimate goal was to paint these pieces a metallic silver, but some friends told me that before doing that, I should apply a black undercoat, which makes the metallic paint look more realistic, especially if you miss any little spots while doing the metallic paint. After a final round of sanding, I was super excited to finally paint these pieces with the metallic top coat. I used Rust-Oleum Universal Metallic in Dark Steel, and this stuff looked incredible. It also sprayed super evenly. I'm really happy I went with the dark steel rather than a lighter silver. I feel like it really adds to the vintage quality of this piece without the need for any distressing. After giving the paint a couple days to dry, I was ready to glue the front plate in place. This sign is illuminated with stick-on LED strips. These are a great versatile way to make light-up signs because you can cut the strips to any length at the exposed copper connections and then just solder the strips together in parallel. You can see here why I included those recessed areas around the mounting screws. This allowed me to bridge the LED strips over these screws without interfering with them. These LED strips usually come with an AC power adapter, but I was using leftover lights from another project, so I had to get a separate power adapter. This one came with this awesome female connector that made it super easy to hook up to the LED strips. I'll leave a link to this power supply in the description, as well as links to all the other tools and materials I used in this project. I picked up a few of these push button switches, which are designed for outdoor use on something like a motorcycle or ATV. Each switch comes with this black rubber boot, which you can use to weatherproof the switch but I was more interested in the naked switch for a simple, low-profile look. I did take apart one of the rubber boots to get at the threaded metal collar, which helped with mounting. I started with a combination of CA glue and a nice, fat, hot glue joint to hold the switch in place but I quickly realized that this wasn't very strong against the force exerted by pushing up on the switch. So I also hot glued a cardboard tube in place to brace the switch against the top of the sign. I will be the first to admit that this is a very janky solution, 
and I could have designed a much cleaner 3D printed switch mount if I just spent some more time on the design. But as I'm sure we've all experienced, at that point in the design process, I was itching to start making this thing in the real world. And when you make that decision, your project might have some jankier aspects. But I'm sure you could come up with a more elegant way of holding these components in the sign. And I would love to hear your solutions in the comments, especially if you end up downloading the files and 3D printing your own sign. It took me a few days to decide where to put this sign, and I finally decided to mount it above the light switch in my workshop so that right when I walk in and turn on the lights, I can also turn on the making art sign. Thank you for watching, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions about designing 3D printed signs in Fusion, suggestions for future videos, or anything else.